Hi friends, and welcome back to another episode of this AI in Action series, Building with Copilot Studio. In this video, we're gonna be looking at authentication and auditing in Copilot Studio. Yes, that's right, you get to hear about all the exciting topics from me, but we will be looking at Microsoft Purview at the end, which in addition to having a particularly perfect name, allows you to peek into all of the activity that's happening in Copilot Studio across your organization. So first, let's talk about why authentication is so important with AI agents. Well, of course, security first starts with making sure that you only have access to the correct data within your agent. But of course, the next level is making sure that only authorized users have access to that agent. To learn about the different kinds of authentication, I'll first create an agent using the website Q&A template. By default, the template will add Microsoft.com as knowledge so that the agent then can answer questions about Microsoft products and services but we could go and add a SharePoint site here too. This makes authentication really important because we don't want to expose any sensitive internal data. You can access your agent authentication settings under security authentication. Let's take a look at the authentication options. No authentication, authenticate with Microsoft and authenticate manually. Let's break them down. Now, no authentication means that your agent doesn't require users to sign in at all. It's suitable for public facing agents that only access public information. And with this option, you have to be absolutely 100% certain that your agent has no access to any sensitive data whatsoever. Selecting the no authentication option allows anyone to interact with your agent. So be very careful with this option. Supposing we wanted to publish our agent to Microsoft Teams, we can do this by selecting the Teams channel, and we might want to add a topic to search for information in Microsoft Dataverse. Now we have two options here. The first is to use the connection created by me, the author, but also user authentication, where the data then will be queried under the identity of the user interacting with the agent. This requires them to create a connection and authenticate with that data source directly. Let's go ahead and try and publish our agent to see what happens. You can see here that we can't publish our agent because it requires the identity of the user to call the Dataverse connector, but we've currently selected no authentication, which brings us to the default setting, authenticate with Microsoft. This option is perfect for creating agents to be published to Teams and Power Apps, and all other channels are turned off. It uses Microsoft Entra ID for seamless sign-in without any additional configuration. After saving and publishing our agent, we can now open the agent in Teams to test it. The agent will be authenticated automatically when accessing SharePoint knowledge. And if the agent does require additional scopes like Dataverse in this case, the user then will be prompted to authenticate using a connect pop-up. But what if we wanted to publish our agent to another channel such as a custom website or custom app? We can select authenticate manually here and then select the service provider. This can be Entra ID or even a generic OAuth authentication provider. A good example of this is the Power Pages agent that can be added to Power Pages. We select generic OAuth 2 in this case and then set all the values to be placeholder. This means that the authentication token that's generated by Power Pages will simply be passed through to the agent for use inside that topic. In the conversation boosting topic that's created automatically when you add an agent to a Power Pages site, there's a call to a Power Pages service that performs a search of the site content. The bearer token is passed into the HTTP request so that any Power Pages web role authentication protected pages can be accessed by the agent using the user's identity. With manual authentication, you get more flexibility and you can use variables like user.access token and user.isLoggedIn in this way to access content. If I wanted to show my agent using a custom user interface, we can use the direct line API with the web chat component. First, I select Active Directory v2 authentication and then enter the client ID and client secret of an Entra ID application that I've already created. Under Expose an API, in the application registration, I've added a custom scope created for this agent. We then copy the scope and add it to the token exchange URL. Next, I need to add the return URL to the application registration. This is the URL that will be redirected to when the authentication is completed. Here I have a simple page that shows the web track control. I've put a link to this sample in the description below. I've added the application ID, tenant ID here already, and for simplicity, I'm using the same application for the agent authentication and the custom app authentication, but it's best practice to use separate ones. I also need to provide the token endpoint of the agent. I can grab this from the mobile app channel settings in Copilot Studio. 
Now when I authenticate using the MSL library, the login card is intercepted and the bearer token from the successful authentication with Entra ID is sent to the agent. So I don't need to log into the agent separately. Now let's talk about why auditing is so important with Copilot Studio. Auditing allows you to monitor how makers are creating agents so that you can then use that information to define and then monitor policies. All administrative actions are logged by default so that you always have a record of significant actions. To access the audit logs, I first have to sign into the Microsoft Purview compliance portal at purview.microsoft.com. I need to have been assigned a role that allows me to access the audit. But then in the left hand menu, I can select solutions and then audit. Here you can filter for specific activities and perform a search in the time period that you're interested in. There are a lot of Copilot Studio activities such as bot create, bot auth update and bot publish to select from. I can specify a time window and then select search. First the search is queued and then once completed, I can view the events and search further within the results by date, IP address, user and activity. So now you know how to secure and monitor Copilot Studio. To find out more about authentication and auditing, head over to the links in the description below. So that's all for today's video. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Microsoft Power Platform channel to hear about new episodes when they drop. So until next time, bye bye for now.